Hi, Frank my name, and I'm here to frankly talk the Word of God. Today, we're talking about false teachings of the world. There are many teachings, you know, but how do you know which one is truth? The book 1 John 4 verse 1 says, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Why? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. 2 Peter 2 verses 1 and 2 says, There shall be false teachers among you, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. And the way, the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Please subscribe, and of course, like, and of course, share. The good news is always best shared. The truth is always written down. That's God's holy word, you know. When somebody talks to you about something which sounds good, of course you must ask them, where did they take it from? If it's not written down, you must be very sure that that's not truth at all. And with the word of God, you do not assume, you know, because assumption is not truth. If I tell you uh, what I think, also that is not truth at all, because I can say anything, but it must be written down in the word of God. If I tell you half a truth, and of course half a lie, all of it will be a lie. Yes, because the truth is one, is one thing. 90% of water and 10% of poison, you know, all of it will be poison. Do not drink it, otherwise it will kill you. Do not accept 10% of uh, the Bible truth at all. 90% of lies. Of course, if you accept that, you will actually die in your sins by accepting that which is actually mixed. Matthew 15 verses 7 to 9, it talks about two types of things. Basically, it talks about tradition of men and also the law of God. So there you are. The law of God is truth. And traditions, people just do. They have no background and it's not written down. You must be very sure that's just a tradition. And God is not interested in traditions of people, but rather in his word, which is actually uh, the truth. And it also, just Christ says, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. That's John 15 verse 14. Furthermore, Jesus Christ says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, John 14 verse 15. Do you love your mother? Then you must listen to her. Do you love your father? Then you must, stay, or you must obey him. Do you love God? Then you must listen to him. And also you must obey him. Otherwise, that's quite as simple as it is. Love, it has to go with obedience. Obedience to the things God never asked you to is actually false obedience. That's why we have to know the truth. And of course the Bible says, the truth will set you free. John 8 verse 32. What is the requirement for the kingdom of God, you may ask? Well, Jesus Christ says, if any man will come after me, you know, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's Matthew 16, verse 25, 24. Another question would be, uh, the rich young ruler actually asked that in the Bible. You can check the story in the book, uh, Matthew 19, verses 16 and 17. The question would be, what must I do to enter the kingdom of God? And that's what he asked Jesus as well. Jesus said, you must keep the commandments. And he said, I've kept the commandments, of course. That's the first part of it. Otherwise, if you don't listen to God, definitely you have nothing to do with his kingdom at all. Don't forget this, that you don't keep the commandments of God in order to be saved. But because you love the one who saved you, that's why you keep the commandments. So, it's not something whereby you're forced, but because you love. In the world, there, there's a path which looks straight. But at the end of it, you know, there is destruction. Uh, Proverbs 14 verse 12. And then also, don't forget this, that even Satan himself comes as an angel of light. Yes, he transforms himself to be that. Yes, that's why Jesus Christ emphasized the point. You know, you must love your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with your mind. That's the first law. You know, Jesus Christ actually condensed that. Matthew 22, 
verse 37. And he did not stop there, actually. He actually also said, love your neighbor as yourself. That's Matthew uh, 22, verse 39. Please take note, the first four commandments of the 10, you know, the talk of love to God. In other words, uh, if you love God, you obey the first commandment, which says, have no other gods before me. And if you love God, you obey, obey the second as well, which says, do not uh, make for yourself graven images. And you also follow the third law, which says, do not use God's name in vain. And if you love God as well, you obey law number four, which says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Of course, on that day, you must not work. As a reminder, Sabbath is actually the last day of the week and not the first day of the week, Sunday, not at all. Yes, we must keep listening to, to, to learn the truth, of course. And Jesus also said you must love your neighbor. What is to love your neighbor, you may ask? Loving your neighbor is actually following the last six of the Ten Commandments, which actually says, the fifth one would say, honor your father and your mother, then you love your neighbor. And then also, it, uh, the next one, which is uh, number six, it says, you shall not kill. And law number seven, it says, you shall not commit adultery. And law number eight, it says, you shall not steal. If you love your neighbor, you will not steal from them. And then also, law number um, nine, it says, you shall not bear false witness or you shall not tell lies. If you love your neighbor, you will not tell lies at all. And law number 10, it says, you shall not covet. Now, this law, you must put a mark on it. You shall not covet because it's going to come back uh, very soon. So if you love your neighbor, you will obey or you listen to the last six of the Ten Commandments. And if you love God, you listen to the first four. So love your God and love your neighbor. They don't take off the Ten Commandments of God at all. Yes, false teachings of the world, that's what we're talking about today. How can you say you love God when you don't, when you, you don't want to listen to Him? You are a slave to whom you obey. You know, the one you listen to is your master. You know, There are rules in your home, and there are also rules at your workplace, and there are rules in your country. And there are also rules um, in the world. Finally, there are the rules by God also. also you, know. you always suffer if you do not listen to these rules. You know, because as Romans 6 verse 23 says, the wages of sin or the wages of disobedience is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The devil is there to desensitize you uh, of sin. He wants you to lose your senses about sin. Sin will always be sin. But when you don't see it to be sin anymore, the devil has taken over your senses. You have been desensitized of the gravity of sin. Just like a person with leprosy, you lose your nerve endings and you burn and you don't feel the pain. And you get pricked and you don't feel the pain. You get scratched and you don't even feel it at all. You know, the devil wants you to die in your sins. And that's why he makes you to lose, um, uh, the, to lose this, the gravity of sin. He wants you to take sin as something not very serious at all. John 14 verse 6 says, I am the way. And also it says, I am the truth. And also it says, I am the life. That's Jesus Christ. Yes, and God does not force us at all. He gives us choices. We can choose to live or we can also choose to die. It's up to us. We can choose the truth of God or we can choose the lies of the devil. Now, are you ready? Brace yourselves. And then also, put your seat belt. Because now, I'm going to start to tell you the false teachings of the world. Yes, hold on tight. Because the turbulence is coming now. Some of these things will be the things you have never heard of. But at the end of the day, they are the false teachings of the world. Yes, God be with us as we hold on. Because if we follow the truth, the truth will set us free. And God will be in our lives at all. And as I say, don't believe everything you hear. You must test. And at the same time, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14, it says, Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. He sounds sweet and nice, but he's actually killing you.
the first of the false teachings of the world. Did you know that the Ten Commandments of God have been changed by a church? Yes, it was changed totally. Please get hold of a Roman Catholic lesson book, which is called a Catechism of their faith. Open the place where it's written Ten Commandments of God. They show Ten Commandments of God, but look very carefully. Law number nine and law number ten. Both of them talk of you shall not covet. Now, open the word of God, you know, in the book Exodus 20, verses 3 to 17. That's where the Ten Commandments are the ones by God. And if you look at law number 10 in the Bible, it's found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. It talks of you shall not covet. There's a list of things you must not covet. But then, you know, it's one law. Did you notice also that in the Roman Catholic Catechism, you know, the laws number 9 and also laws number 10, they talk of you shall not covet. But then they had put as two different laws there. Why? Because the law number two, which talks about you shall not uh, have graven images, in that book is actually scratched off, it's actually been deleted. And that law, you can actually find it in Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 to 6. It has been deleted from their catechism. You know, the fact is that they removed the law of worshipping graven images because they do it, they have graven images in their worshipping places. And that law has been replaced by not to take the name of the Lord in vain. Did you notice that? Now, in the Catechism, you know, it talks about um, the Ten Commandments. It looks like the Ten Commandments. But then when you look at it, one of them actually has been removed. As I said, second law has been removed. So it looks like this. I hope you can uh, focus. It says the Ten Commandments, but there are ten. But law number nine and ten is law number ten only in the Bible. So that's the difference. Now, you must be very sure about that. I'll read you uh, law number one, which says you shall not worship your God. Uh, your you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone you shall serve. That's what it says. And second one says you shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. So that law in the Bible, it's actually law number three. And then the third law in this book, it says observe the Sabbath to keep it holy. In the Bible, that law is actually number four. So things have been changed. I'll read you uh, law number uh, eight, uh, nine, and ten. Law number nine, it says, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. And law number 10, it says, you shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. But covet is one law in the Ten Commandments. So you must be very sure that things actually have been changed. And to change the law of God is not right because it's not your law, it's not a church's law, it's actually the law of God itself. Now, if you want to check about the law, which is um, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, it's actually written in the book Exodus 20, uh, verses 8 to 11. By the way, the Lord's day in the book, in the Catechism, is actually taken as Sunday, which is actually not true. Because the Lord's day, if you read um, Matthew 28, verse 1, it talks about the Lord's day and, and, and it talks about Sabbath and also the first day of the week. Now, it makes that distinction. Now, the Lord's Day, if you read Exodus 20, verse 10, and compare that with Matthew, Mark 2, verses 23 to 28, the Lord's Day is actually the Sabbath, which is the last day of the week, which is Saturday. Now, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath day, but please note that the Pharisees and Sadducees were accusing Jesus Christ of um, plucking wheat in a field en route to a mission. That is not work. Jesus Christ is a lawgiver and he cannot break the law which he established. So we must hear and understand. Changing the law of God, as this book actually has changed it, it means you're also changing uh, the judgment of God. And when you look at it, you know, you can't change the judgment of God because God himself 
He's the one who gave that law and he's the one who can change it. But of course, God himself exactly does not change. We'll come back to that, but of course, we must know. If you change the law of God, you're also trying to change the commandment of God and you're actually working against God. Yes, it's quite long, but that's the first of the false teachings of uh, the world. It is also a false teaching to say that money can bring you happiness or that money if you give money to a church, actually somebody will be forgiven of their sins. It's quite a false teaching. My daughter was taught that by giving tithe, you know, it will protect her from her business travels. Other churches say that, you know, when you give money and whoever was your relative, the one who died many years ago, their sins will also be forgiven. That's what they say, which is actually a lie. You know, other churches also they give. They say that uh, the giving of money uh, it will actually bless you. But money always comes from God. How how will that bless you? And also your sins cannot be forgiven. You know, um, because of money, because a person dies once, and after he has died, of course there is no other second chance. Hebrews nine verse twenty seven it says, "It is appointed for a man to die once, and after that, the judgment." So there is no second chance after death. For repentance at all. After all, money already belongs to God. Haggai 2 verse 8, it says, The silver is mine and the gold is mine. You know, that's what the Lord of hosts says. So you must not be cheated at all. Yes, your money, you know, is just your money to help you as you are in this world. In the book of Acts 8 verse 20, there was a person who was there. He wanted to um, have the Holy Spirit. The disciples of Jesus Christ, the apostles, were actually healing people by the Holy Spirit. And this person, he said, I want to have that gift. But then Peter, he actually told this person, because he had a lot of money and he wanted to buy it. But Peter, he told him, he says, the gift of God cannot be purchased, cannot be purchased with your money. So he told him, go and perish with your money. Of course, money is not like that. There's the other churches, even today, these days, they actually promote money, money, money as a way of salvation, which is not true. I went to a church which uh, was preaching one of the days, and when I went in, I was listening, and the presenter, he said, um, giving, you know, is like breathing. He said, if you breathe, you're alive, but if you stop breathing, you're dead. And he says, breathing is like giving. If you stop giving, you also die. That's what it says. But where is it written in the Bible? Definitely it's not written anywhere at all. So that's a false teaching. Yes. And also, there's another false teaching which talks about um, in the Bible, Revelation 7 verse 4. It talks about 144,000. The Jehovah's Witnesses, they say, those are the only people who will be saved. And it's them, that's what they say. But if you read further, uh, Revelation 7 verse 9, it says there were a great multitude of people who would not be numbered. So, it's not them. There are so many people who will be saved. It's not just them. But they put it to be a part of their church. If you don't belong to the church, then you are not saved. But of course, you have to listen to the law of God as well. Because obedience is part of, uh, you know, uh, salvation. Otherwise, if you go to heaven, you'll not be obeying. What type of person are you going to be? So, that's the end of the first part. The second part is going to follow. We are learning the false teachings of the world. Don't go away. <laughs>